Reptiles in the order Squamata are more commonly known as lizards, snakes and amphibians. Although we often think of these as completely different groups of reptiles, it is impossible to create a phylogeny that includes all lizards but excludes the snakes. Snakes only diverged from lizards about 150 million years ago, around the middle to end of the Jurassic period, and so is more recent than many of the other lineages of lizards. Among the other groups of reptiles with living species, Squamata is most closely related to the Rhynchocephalia, whose only living member is the Tuatara of New Zealand. Despite its superficial similarities, the Tuatara is not a lizard, and so is not part of Squamata. The Rhynchocephalians are a fascinating group in their own right, and will be worth a video of their own in the future. Squamata is the largest group of living reptiles with over 10,900 named species. This also makes it the second largest order of living vertebrates, only after the Perciform fish. Partly due to this diversity, squamates are the most variable in size of all living reptiles. They range from the Haragua dwarf gecko of the Virgin Islands, which is about 16 millimetres or 0.63 inches, to the reticulated python at 6.5 metres or 21 feet. Extinct squamates could be even larger. The extinct marine reptiles known as the mosasaurs are included in squamata, and these were estimated to have reached lengths of around 14 metres or 46 feet. The name squamata comes from Latin, meaning scaly or having scales. Their scaly skin is also their defining trait. Other reptiles may have scales, but only squamates will shed this skin as they grow. Most squamates also lack the bony osteoderms under their scales that are seen in crocodiles and turtles, but this feature is shared with tuatara, so is not completely unique to the squamates. The phylogeny of squamata has been controversial ever since the group was first described. Historically, it simply had three suborders, which you might be able to guess from the common names given to this group. These were the lizards, the snakes, and the amphibians. This is, naturally, far too simplistic, as the group for the lizards is paraphyletic, meaning it doesn't include all of the groups descended from it. This is because both the snakes and the amphibians have common ancestors with the lizards, so it cannot be separated like that. So, did molecular analysis help? Studies using molecular analysis agreed that there were several distinct lineages among the squamates, but different studies still disagree on exactly how the individual group should be placed. The phylogenetic tree used in this video is based on work from Wiens et al. in 2012 and Zheng and Wiens in 2016, but it is disputed in some areas by other studies, so take the exact relationships mentioned here with a grain of salt. The most distantly related group of squamata is probably a group that you have never heard of. It is the Bamidae, or the blind skinks. This group is two genera with 23 species. They are small, worm-like lizards that have reduced limbs. Females have no visible limbs, while the males have two highly reduced limbs, which they only use to grab onto a female when mating. Their eyes are greatly reduced and are covered with a scale, and they lack external ears. This means that they have almost no external features that make them recognisable as vertebrates, let alone as lizards. It is believed that they lost these features due to their fossorial lifestyle. Eyes are useless underground, limbs will get in the way when burrowing, and ears can fill with soil. As such, these features were detrimental to the blind skinks, and so they became reduced or absent over time. This is largely speculation as to their origins, however, as only one fossil specimen has ever been found, and it is far more recent than the presumed ancient origins of this lineage. Identified only from some jawbones, this fossil from Mongolia was from the Oligocene Epoch, about 30 million years ago. Most blind skinks today are found in Southeast Asia, Indonesia, the Philippines and New Guinea. The only one found outside of this range is the Mexican blind skink, the sole member of its genus, which, as its name suggests, is only found in Mexico. Depending on the species, they can reach a maximum length of 25 centimetres, or 9.8 inches. They are generally dark coloured from brown to purple, with little or no colour variation along their length. Their scale is more rigid than most squamates, which helps them with burrowing. They have fewer than 10 teeth, but are insectivorous. They lay one egg, which has a rigid calcified shell, unlike the more leathery shells of most reptiles. The next lineage is one you will definitely have heard of. This is the geckos in the infraorder Gekota. This is a large group of lizards with over 1,850 named species. They have worldwide distribution with species on every continent except Antarctica. Geckos tend to be small, ranging in size from 1.6 to 60 centimetres, or 0.6 to 23.6 inches. Most lack eyelids and they are nocturnal. They have excellent colour vision, being much more sensitive than human eyes in low light conditions. The defining characteristic of most species is their specialised toe pads, which are used to cling to smooth and vertical surfaces, making them excellent climbers. The skin of geckos is not as obviously scaled as that of other lizards, but does seem to have some antibacterial properties. 
Geckos are one of the groups of lizards known for tail autotomy. This is where they will amputate their own tail when startled or frightened in an attempt to escape from predation. The tail will grow back, but it is usually stunted and noticeably different from the original. There are seven different families of geckos, broadly divided into two clades. The first clade contains the families only found in Australasia. Diplodactylidae are the only family of geckos in New Zealand, and they are the most ecologically diverse of the ones found in Australia and New Caledonia. There are 149 species in total, but over a third of these are considered threatened. This family is most noted as having the only examples of viviparity, or giving birth to live young, among geckos, being observed in two species from New Caledonia and all of the species in New Zealand. Picopodidae, or the legless lizards, are a family of geckos that have lost their limbs, giving them a superficial similarity to snakes. Unlike snakes, they have external ear holes and a flat, unforked tongue. They are only found in Australia and New Guinea, and there are at least 35 species across 8 genera. Carphodactylidae, or the southern padless geckos, are endemic to Australia. As their common name suggests, they are unlike most other geckos as they lack the adhesive toe pads most geckos are known for. Instead, they climb on bark and other substrates, using their sharply curved claws. This family has 32 species, making them the smallest group of geckos. The other clade of geckos are the families that are found outside Australasia. Eubulifaridae, or the eyelid geckos, are so called because they are the only group of geckos to have eyelids. There are 43 species and they are found throughout Asia, Africa and North and Central America. Several species of Eubulifaridae are popular in the pet trade, such as the leopard gecko and the African fat-tailed gecko. Spherodactylidae, or the spheros, is a large family of geckos found throughout the Americas, Southern Europe, Northern Africa, the Middle East and Central Asia. There are over 200 species named across 12 genera. The vast majority of these are in a single genus, Spherodactylus, which alone contains around 108 species. The family Philodactylidae contains around 150 species and they are found throughout the Americas, Europe, North Africa and the Middle East. It is a family that was first proposed in 2008 when molecular analyses determined that these geckos were of a separate lineage from the last family Gekonidae. Gekonidae is by far the largest family of geckos with over 950 species and 64 genera. They are found globally but are particularly diverse and abundant in tropical areas. This family includes the genus Hemidactylus, which alone contains 190 species, and is considered one of the most species-rich and widely distributed of all reptile genera. However, many of the other genera in this family are endemic to certain areas. For example, the genus Afrogecko only has one species which is only found in South Africa. If we go back to the phylogeny of Squamata, then the next group is the infraorder Schinciformata, or the skinks and their close relatives. They are defined by their large, cone-shaped heads with large, symmetrical and shield-like scales across their body. Many of them have osteoderms, which are bony plates underneath their scales, giving them a rough or a spiky appearance. There are around 1,700 species of skink worldwide, most of which are in Southeast Asia, Australia or North America, although they are present on every continent except Antarctica. The first family in this group is Skinsidae, or the true skinks. This is by far the largest family in this infraorder, with over 1,500 species. They have small legs for their size, which typically results in their body being close to the ground. There are several genera without legs at all, but this is not true for most skinks. They also have little or no visible neck. Many skinks will dig and spend time in underground burrows to avoid predation. They are often camouflaged for their environment as well, making them difficult to spot on rocks or soil. While many skinks lay eggs, around 45% give birth to live young. There are several different types of live birth, and very unusually for a reptile, several genera of skink have young in a similar way to placental mammals, that is, the young are given nutrients by a placenta-like structure. Most of these other live birth species are, use a method known as oviviviparity. This is where the eggs are incubated in the female's reproductive tract before hatching, and emerging from the mother as newly hatched young. Oviviviparity is a method used by some other reptiles, most notably some snakes. The next family in Schinciformata is Xanthusidae, or the night lizards. This is a family of small lizards, averaging from less than 4 cm, or 1.6 inches in length, to around 12 cm, or 4.7 inches. There are 34 species, divided across 3 genera. They are only found in the southern United States of America, Cuba, and Central America, with only one genus in each location. The common name of night lizards was given because it was believed that they were nocturnal, as they were rarely seen. This has since been proven false in several species, so the name is not entirely accurate. They are rarely seen as they have evolved to inhabit microhabitats such as rock crevices or damp logs, and they may spend their entire life under the same cover.
Durasauridae, or the plated lizards, are only found in Africa and especially Madagascar and sub-Saharan regions. There are 38 species over 7 genera. There was honestly not a lot of information I could find on this family. Most species seem to favour sandy environments as many dig or burrow into the sand, but they can also be found in grasslands, rainforests or more open areas. One species has even been shown to be semi-aquatic and will run to hide in water when threatened. Most species are insectivorous, although some will supplement this with plant matter. The family called Delidae has many common names, including the girdled lizards, the spiny tail lizards, and the girdled tail lizards. This family is closely related to the plated lizards, and is also only found in Africa. This is the second largest family in this group, with around 68 species across 10 genera. As a fun fact, one of these genera is named Smog, after the dragon in J.R.R. Tolkien's book, The Hobbit. The girdled lizards are insectivores, and active during the day. They tend to live in crevices and rocky terrain, although at least one species digs burrows, and another lives under peeling bark on trees. Moving on from the skinks, the next clad in squamata is the Infraorda laterata, containing the true lizards and their closest relatives. This is a diverse group of reptiles whose relations to the rest of squamata were not clear until molecular techniques were developed. They are distinguished by squarish scales, which is also the meaning of laterata. The first family in laterata is Gymnophthalmidae, or the spectacled lizards. This contains around 250 species, and they get their name due to the transparent lower eyelid, allowing them to still see while their eyes are closed. While more closely related to the true lizards, the spectacled lizards do look like skinks, as many species have reduced limbs, although their scales are smoother. Unusually for lizards, it is their hind legs that tend to be reduced instead of their forelimbs. Spectacled lizards live in a wide variety of habitats, including deserts, mountains and rainforest, but are only found in Central and South America. They are insectivorous, and all species lay eggs. They can often be found beneath logs, rocks and other debris as they search for food. Alopoglossidae, or the shade lizards, were considered a subfamily of the spectacled lizards until 2016, when studies using molecular techniques elevated its status to that of a full family. While I have listed them as a sister clade to the spectacled lizards, this is controversial and it is unclear what the exact relationship between Gymnophthalmidae, Alopoglossidae and the third family of Teidae is. The shade lizards are found from Costa Rica and Central America, South into Northern South America. This family contains around 32 species and they are mostly lizards dwelling on or in the leaf litter on the forest floor. They use their brownish coloration and secretive behaviours to avoid detection and predation. Teidae is a diverse group of lizards containing the whiptails, caiman lizards and tegus, with about 150 species in total. These are currently divided between two subfamilies, and while there has been some debate on whether these subfamilies should be elevated into completely separate families, this has not been widely accepted. Teids are characterised by large rectangular scales that form distinct rows on their underside, with smaller scales on their back. All teids also have a forked, snake-like tongue. They are mostly terrestrial, although there are a couple of semi-aquatic species. They are active during the day and are typically carnivorous or insectivorous. Several species of whiptail seem to be entirely female with no male specimens known. These species reproduce by obligate parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis is the process for allowing an embryo to develop in an egg without needing any sperm. In whiptails, the offspring are not full clones of the mother as cell division still takes place, introducing variation into the young's genetics. It is known as obligate because they do not have a choice in this. There are no males so they can only reproduce in this way. The species in this family range from quite small to very large. The smallest is the little striped whiptail, which can be as little as 17 centimetres or 6.5 inches in length. Compare this to the red tegu, which can get to around 1.4 metres long or 4.5 feet. Several species in this family are popular in the pet trade, such as the red tegu or the Argentinian black and white tegu, which are both notable for their large size but docile natures, making them an interesting exotic pet. Cayman lizards are also sometimes seen in the pet trade, their beautiful coloration making them quite desirable, but they are hard to keep, largely due to their specialised diet as they only eat snails, whereas tegus are omnivores, eating meat, insects, fruit and eggs. Lacertidae, or the true lizards, are a little more distantly related than the other three families in Laterata that we have discussed so far. They are a large group with 390 species in total. They are the dominant group of lizards found in Europe, but they are also found in Asia and Africa. They live in a variety of habitats, including grasslands, deserts, forests, scrubland, and rocky areas. Few true lizards are arboreal, although there are a couple of species that can glide between trees. These species have flattened bodied, fused fingers, and a low body mass to help with this. The true lizards are typically small, with most species being less than 9 cm or 3.5 inches, excluding their tail. The Gran Canaria giant lizard is the largest in this family and can reach admittedly impressive sizes of around 46 cm or 18 inches.
The closest living relatives to the true lizards is, surprisingly, the Amphisbanians. I have simply left these as a clade instead of listing the six different families, as there is honestly not too much known about each one, despite the fact that there are 200 species between them in total. Their exact placement within Squamata has been a topic for debate until fairly recently, as molecular evidence has provided a conclusive answer to their most likely position. Amphisbanians are legless reptiles that strongly resemble earthworms, or the blind skinks that were mentioned earlier. This is due to convergent evolution, as all of these groups have reduced limbs and rudimentary eyes due to their fossorial lifestyle. Note that not all families are completely limbless. The family Bipedidae still have small but well-developed forelimbs. They have a very distinctive skin that is made up of rings of scales. Their name derives from the Greek monster Amphisbana, which was a mythological serpent with a head at each end. Despite some similarities to snakes, Amphisbanians actually have many morphological differences from them, aside from the rings of scales mentioned earlier. Amphisbanians can be insectivores, but many are carnivores like snakes. Unlike snakes, they will use their teeth to tear chunks out of their prey as opposed to swallowing it whole like a snake. While both are elongated, Amphisbanians achieve this with a reduced right lung, whereas in snakes it is always their left lung that is reduced. Finally, they move in very different ways. Snakes use the well-known sidewinder technique, where they slither right and left trying to achieve a forward motion. Amphisbanians, however, use a more accordion-like motion, where their muscles will bunch up the rings of scales to move the body forwards or backwards. Amphisbanians are found on all continents, except Australasia and Antarctica. They rarely leave their burrows, so it can be hard to find despite this wide distribution or the hundreds of known species. Returning to the overall phylogeny of Squamata, all of the remaining groups are placed in the clay Toxicophera, which means that these are the squamates with venom. Despite this name, not all of these species are venomous, although it does include some of the most venomous animals on the planet. The obvious example of this is the suborder Serpentes, or the snakes. I'm not actually going to go into detail about this group right now, as I have a video planned for the future talking about snakes. So I will cover much of it then. For now, the important point is that you cannot have a phylogeny of all lizards without including the snakes too. They are closely related groups, although they do look noticeably different from each other. Moving past the snakes, there is the suborder Anguimorpha. This is another diverse group, including everything from the monitors to the American legless lizards and the gala wasps. The first clade in Anguimorpha are the monitors and their closest relatives. Starting with the family Shinosauridae, this only has one living animal in it, the Chinese crocodile lizard. This is an endangered lizard that is found in parts of China and Vietnam. It spends its life in shallow water or in branches or vegetation overhanging water, where it hunts for insects, snails, tadpoles and worms. The Chinese crocodile lizard was once considered part of the family Xenosauridae, which we will be covering in a minute, but genetic analyses have proved that it is more closely related to monitors than to Xenosaurids. The next family of Lanthanotidae also contains only one species, the earless monitor lizard. This is an endangered semi-aquatic lizard endemic to Borneo, and is the closest living relative to the true monitors. It is another animal whose evolutionary history was disputed before genetic testing, with it being placed either in the family Helidomatidae, which contains the beaded lizards like the Gila monster, or Varanidae, with the true monitors. Earless monitor lizards are nocturnal, spending the day in burrows that are located near the water. They are generally inactive, but can move quickly when startled. In captivity, they remain virtually immobile underwater for hours, periodically lifting their snout out of the water to breathe. When underwater, its semi-transparent lower eyelids will be closed, protecting their eyes. Its tail is believed to be prehensile, and it has been speculated that it uses this to anchor itself to rocks or roots to prevent from being swept away in a flood, but this theory has never been proven. Unlike their close relatives, it is not believed that their bite is venomous. Varanidae, or the true monitors, is the last family in this clade. It only has one living genus, Varanus, with about 80 species. It contains the largest living lizard, the Komodo dragon, which can reach lengths of up to 3 metres or 9.8 feet. Monitors are native to Africa, Asia and Oceania, although the West African Nile monitor has an invasive population in Florida, likely established by escaped or released pets. Most monitors are carnivorous, eating eggs, fish, smaller reptiles, birds, insects and small mammals, but a few will eat fruit and vegetation as well. The Komodo dragon is known for targeting larger prey than most monitors, such as deer and water buffalo. Many monitors are kept as pets. The savannah monitor and Aki's dwarf monitor are particularly desirable for their smaller size, lower cost and relatively calm disposition when handling. However, experienced reptile keepers can keep a diverse range of the larger monitor species, keeping these in the exotic pet trade as well. 
Monitors are sometimes killed due to uses in traditional medicine or for their leather or meat. While most species are listed by the IUCN as of least concern, these pressures are contributing to a global decrease in their population size. All monitors are believed to be partially venomous. While not as dangerous as certain snakes, their venom can cause rapid swelling, drops in blood pressure, and prevent blood from clotting. The effects of this venom is fairly mild for humans, but will quickly kill the smaller prey that makes up the bulk of their diet. Varanidae is the last of the families containing the monitors and their closest relatives, so I will simplify that branch of the tree to their clade, Paleoanguamorpha. Helodermatidae, or the beaded lizards, is a small family of venomous lizards found in North and Central America. It only contains one genus with five species, the most well known of which is the Gila monster. The scales on the head, back and tail have bony osteoderms for protection, but these are absent from the scales on their belly. Most species are dark in colour, with yellowish or pinkish markings. Unlike snakes, bearded lizards are unable to inject their venom from a single bite. Instead, they need to chew their venom into the target. This venom is used only for defence and is not needed to subdue prey. They are carnivorous, eating rodents and other small animals as well as eggs. Venom among lizards was long thought to be unique to this family, but more recently the monitors in Varanidae have been proven venomous, and some other lizard families are now also suspected to be venomous. This led to the formation of the Toxicophera clade, with the snakes, beaded lizards and other venomous lizards placed close to each other. Xenosauridae, or the knob-scaled lizards, only have one living genus with 14 species, all of which are only found in Mexico or Guatemala. They tend to live in rocky crevices or under logs and can be found at altitudes as high as 2300 metres above sea level, or 7700 feet. They are distinguished by their flattened bodies and their common name comes from the large rough scales covering their back. These lizards are insectivores. The family Diploglossidae has 14 genera. They are found in the Americas with most of them in offshore nations like Jamaica, the Dominican Republic and Haiti. They are commonly known as Galawasps, although the origin of this unusual name is unknown. Galawasps look a little like skinks, with streamlined bodies and a robust head. They are found in many different environments, from forest to scrubland to swamp. They also have a varied diet, including plants, fruit, fish, insects, worm, mollusks, small lizards and mammals. Not much is really known about them, as they are rarely seen. They burrow into soil or leaf litter, and are thought to be crepuscular, that is, most active at dawn and dusk. The family Annealidae, or the American legless lizards, only has a single genus with six species. As their name suggests, they are only found in North America. Specifically, five species are only found in California and the United States of America, with the remaining one in Mexico. Many of these species have only been differentiated relatively recently in 2013, with the aid of genetic analyses. Before this, all of the Californian species were considered a single species. As a result, not much is known about the habits of each one, since most observations of them were attributed to a single species. As their common name also suggests, these lizards have no legs, giving them a snake-like appearance. They are insectivores, but as they are burrowing animals, they are rarely seen. The last family of the Anguamorpha, and the closest relative to the American legless lizards, is Anguidae. This is a diverse family of lizards with about 87 species in 8 genera. Many, but not all of these species are also legless. The legless ones are commonly known as the glass lizards, or slowworms, and are in their own subfamily. The other subfamily contains the alligator lizards. Given how diverse this family is, it is hard to give overall features and habits for the group. All of them have bony osteoderms under their scales, giving them an armoured appearance. Most species are insectivorous, but some of the larger ones will also eat reptiles and amphibians. Most species are land-based or burrowing, but one genus is arboreal. They are found throughout the Northern Hemisphere, with species in Europe, Asia, Northern Africa and North America. The last group in Squamata is the suborder Iguania, which includes the iguanas, chameleons, anoles, and their closest relatives. This suborder contains around 2,000 species, but their exact placement has been debated ever since its creation, due to the diverse array of lizards in it, which share few common characteristics. Molecular information has finally placed this group as most closely related to the anguamorphs, and closer to snakes than other squamates. There are 14 extinct families in the suborder, so let's get started. The first family is one you are likely familiar with. It is Chameleonidae, or the Chameleons. This is a distinctive group of lizards found mostly in Africa, but also in parts of Europe and Asia, that are known for their colour-changing capabilities, long frog-like tongue, and prehensile tail. They often have horns or crests on their brow or snout, and are taller than they are wide, unlike skinks and many other lizards. Their eyes and feet are both unique among reptiles and possibly all living animals. Their feet are most similar to that of parrots, with two toes on either side to help them grip branches. 
Their eyes have fused lower and upper eyelids with only a pinhole in the middle through which they can see. Their eyes can move independently, allowing them to focus on two different objects simultaneously. This gives them full 360 degrees of vision, and they also have the highest level of magnification for their size of any vertebrate. As you can tell from this list, chameleons are extremely unique in the animal kingdom, and are definitely worth their own video at some point. For now, let's move on to the rest of the suborder. The next family is Agamidae, or the Agamids. Many of their species are known as dragons for their resemblance to those mythical beasts. Often covered in rough scales with horns, spikes and other protrusions giving them a very distinctive appearance. There are around 550 species being mostly found in Australia, Africa and Asia with a few in southern Europe. Some agamids have limited colour changing abilities to help them regulate temperature. They typically live in warm environments such as deserts or tropical forests. The key distinguishing feature is their teeth which are in the outer rim of their mouth, a feature unique amongst lizards to the agamids and chameleons. Most species are insectivorous although some will eat small vertebrates or plant matter. One notable member of this family is the central or inland bearded dragon, which is one of the most popular lizards to keep in captivity, enjoyed for their friendly, gentle and curious nature, as well as their distinctive appearance. As the two most distantly related groups in the suborder, I will combine the chameleons and dragons into their clade on the phylogeny. This is largely in the interest of conserving space, as there are still a lot of families to cover. Let's move on to a family you are much less likely to have heard of, Lyocephalidae, or the curly-tailed lizards, still have a very distinctive appearance, but are only found in the West Indies. There are 30 known species, all in a single genus. As their common name suggests, their most distinctive feature is their long tail that is often curled at the tip. They are omnivores, eating insects, fruit and flowers. Next, the family Iguanidae, or the Iguanas, are large lizards found in tropical regions of the Americas, aside from one genus found in Fiji. There are around 47 species over 9 genera, some species, particularly the green iguana, are invasive in many parts of the world, aided by the exotic pet trade. Many other species have very restricted distributions and so are endangered or critically endangered. They are usually herbivorous and arboreal. One major exception to this is the marine iguana, which lives on the Galapagos Islands and feeds on algae in the surrounding waters. The next family is Hoplocercidae, or the wood lizards. They are found in Central and South America and contain around 20 species. As with many squamates, their exact phylogenetic placement is disputed, although it is widely agreed that they belong somewhere in Iguania. Not much seems to be known about them, as online sources often disagree about the basics, such as how many genera and how many species are contained in this family. They often have a row of spines down the middle of their back, giving them a, the alternate common name of spiny-tailed lizards. They also look fairly similar to true iguanas, leading to some species being known as dwarf iguanas. Crotophytidae, or the collared lizards, are desert lizards that are found in northern Mexico and the southwestern United States. They are fast-moving animals with slender bodies and have long tails and limbs. Some species are even able to run on two legs at high speeds, although they are still quadrupedal most of the time. There are two genera with a total of 12 species. Crotophytidae, also known as the cask-headed or helmeted lizards, are only found in the Americas. They are distinguished by the large crests on the adults. In some species it is dimorphic, being only present or larger on the males, while in other species it is present in both sexes. This family includes the basilisks, well known for their ability to run on water to escape from danger. There are nine species and three genera currently recognised. Tropoduridae, or the neotropical ground lizards, are only found in South America. Most of them are ground dwelling, with several species adapted to the colder climates of the Andes and other mountain ranges. While many species are terrestrial, a few are arboreal, so the common name is not entirely accurate. There are 8 genera with over 140 species. More species are still being discovered, so it is hard to get an exact number for them. The remaining families of Iguania are arranged in two distinct clades. In the first one, we will start with Phrenosomatidae, or the spiny or horned lizards. This is a diverse group of lizards found in North America. Most of them live in hot, sandy deserts, but some live in more rocky areas, or even in prairies and scrubland. There are over 160 species in 9 genera. The vast majority of these are in a single genus, Scaloporus, with 114 of these species. The spiny lizards tend to be cryptically coloured with bony osteoderms and spines. They tend to be insectivores and some can have very specialised diets, such as only eating certain species of ant. The next family in this clade is Dactyloidae, or the Anoles. These are found in the warmer parts of the Americas, from the southern United States south to Paraguay. They are small to medium sized lizards. While many are green or brown in colour, many species have some ability to change their coloration. 
The most distinctive feature is the dewlap seen in males of most species. This is a large and brightly coloured flap of skin under the neck that they inflate to display when attracting a mate or defending their territory. As with many lizards, the exact phylogeny of anoles is contested. Traditionally, there was only one genus in this family, but more recent studies have proposed dividing this into eight genera. There are about 430 species in the family. The family most closely related to the anoles is Polycrotidae, or the bush anoles. It only has one living genus with eight species. These used to be included in the same family as the true anoles, but molecular analyses have proved that they are a little more distantly related. They are found in Central and South America, as well as nearby Trinidad and Tobago. Not too much is known about them. They are arboreal and live mostly in rainforests. They tend to be omnivores, eating insects and vegetation. Moving on to the last clade in Iguania, we will start with Leo Lamidae. They do not have a common name, but include the tree iguanas and snow swifts, among others. There are three genera and over 330 species. Of these, 280 species are in a single genus. Leolamid lizards are typically herbivorous with a diet that is high in fruit. Because of this specialised diet, these lizards have smaller intestines than similar insectivorous and omnivorous lizards. Next, we have Leosauridae. Again, there is no common name for this family, but it contains the big head lizards, fat head anoles, Patagonian lizards, and smooth iguanas, among others. It has a total of 6 genera and 34 species. They are found in Central and South America, and despite their common name, their heads are not really noticeably larger than that of other lizards in Iguania. The final family is Opleuridae, or the Madagascan iguanas, which are only found in Madagascar and the Comoros Islands. These were originally believed to have been an ancient lineage of iguana, but a molecular study in 2022 have shown them to be most closely related to the other New World families, making them a sister taxon to Leosauridae. As such, it is now believed that these iguanas came from South America and colonised Madagascar by oceanic dispersal, either by island hopping or floating on driftwood or other debris, around 60 million years ago. There are two genera with eight species in this family. This is quite a diverse group, with different species preferring sandy, rocky or forested habitats. As you might have noticed, the order Squamata is a very complicated and diverse group of reptiles, so I hope you learned something new. Keep an eye out for the video on snakes in the near future, but until then, thank you for listening and feel free to suggest another group of animals you want to see me cover in the comments.